my name's Annie and today we're going to talk a bit about how Minecraft Dreamer SMP number 45,667 became my favourite SMP, probably ever, where I think it took a turn in the wrong direction and why even after how god awful some of the communities become, and even after heat waves, there's still a soft spot for it in my heart. The last time you clicked on a Dream SMP related video was either a day ago or months ago, there's no in between. Don't worry, I'm in that camp too. A significant portion of the content I consume is exclusively from this one singular Minecraft server that's barely even active apart from the occasional lore stream. The Dream SMP started on April 24th, 2020, and at the time Dream was just starting on his journey of insane YouTube growth. The only players on the SMP were the Dream Team, Dream, George, Sapnap, and a few close friends like Callahan, Awesome Dude, and Alyssa. At the time, I had only just gotten into Minecraft. Minecraft again after Wilbur Soot started making videos about it, and I barely knew who Dream was. I didn't watch a single video until the 14th of May that year. The initial era of the Dream SMP wasn't what piqued anyone's interest though, because it was, well, Minecraft Streamer SMP number 7 million, with the success of SMP Live. Eat pet corner! No, it's not. Eat it's not pet funny. It's not funny. Stop it. And later SMP Earth. We <laughs> got, got him surrounded. <laughs> Yeah, this feel <laughs> Every Minecraft content creator was starting an SMP in the hopes of being the next one to make it big. Dream's SMP was really no different. There was nothing to set it apart. That is, until Tommy Init joined the server. Tommy brought to the server something different, something special, and incidentally, this was the time I started watching it. What Tommy sparked in the Dream SMP that no other SMP had really done at the time after SMP Earth's decline was this incredible mix of both humour and normalcy. It wasn't all about chasing bits, it wasn't about trying to become the most powerful, it just felt like I, we, I should say, as viewers, were looking into a normal SMP that even we could be on that just so happened to be incredibly engaging, incredibly funny. It filled a gap that that I didn't even know existed, a gap that a server as crazy as Hermitcroft or a server as modified and played up as SMP Earth could never fill, a gap that was only accentuated by the quarantine and the loss of real social interaction between friends. There was a sense of routine and safety in knowing that every day I could tune into a stream on the SMP at the same time and just switch off, escape from the real world and just laugh along with these streamers for hours at a time. I'm not saying the SMP was without his flaws because certainly there were many even way back at the start, but the main point that sold me as a viewer on this SMP was that the stories didn't seem forced, they didn't seem scripted, they didn't seem thought out in an age where content creation is becoming increasingly planned out, strategized and optimized through various algorithms, it seemed genuine, it seemed real. I've always been a sucker for entertainment which centers itself on roleplay, be that with theatre, be that with the content I watched on YouTube, hell, me and my friends accidentally created a clone of Dungeons and Dragons which we played every day on the bus ride to school despite never having heard of the game. Naturally, then, when Wilbur joined the SMP and ended up creating Lamanberg in the course of doing a bit with Tommy, the concept piqued my interest. What had previously made me a die-hard fan of Wilbur's videos, the storylines that he wove into his 100 player challenges created out a string of completely unplanned events that happened live on stream, that had now come to the SMP. I've played up the fact that Lamanberg was started in the front for drugs before, but I've never really talked about how rivetingly unique this made Lamanberg as a concept. Wilbur, as a creator, was and is very interested in social dynamics, in bringing aspects of the real world into the content he creates, and the thing which sold Lamanberg for me was just that, the sheer hastiness of it all. The plot didn't feel any more contrived or forced than any other streamer's personas felt on stream, and it was all completely unscripted. Out of that mixer, two theatre kids, a live audience of about 20,000 viewers, which was massive at the time, and you get some of the most raw, emotion-filled streaming content ever. Tommy streamed daily for weeks before this, building up the sense of attachment to not only Lamanberg, but to these characters that were slowly being played up more and more, to Tubbo, to Fundy, to these creators who I'd either never heard of or only seen a few YouTube videos about. It was thought provoking, it was engaging, it created this parasocial bond between the characters and not only me, but thousands upon thousands of other viewers getting us attached and invested in these characters, building up tension until it was never meant to be.
This incredible crescendo, however, also created incredible expectations for the rest of the SMP. Suddenly, there was a clear line in the sand. Bits couldn't really be given life the way Lamanberg was way back then, because the lore had to be perfect, the story couldn't be ruined. Suddenly, the concept of a lore stream became common and accepted, and the regular SMP streams became little more than they were before the lore, before Wilbur joined, but something felt missing. Suddenly, it felt like there was a cap on what could be done on the SMP. There was a limit to how far a bit could go. There was always this idea that nothing could permanently really be changed unless it was being done in a lore stream. Regular streams lost their punch because, in the end, all that mattered was what happened in the lore streams, right? Vlogs did what the SMP could no longer do because the vlogs are basically what the SMP used to be, just a friend group messing about and reacting to situation. Sure, there's a goal, there's a premise, there's an idea of what might happen. But it isn't set in stone, it isn't scripted. At the risk of sounding cheesy, the vlogs are about the journey, not the destination. There's no big reveal or event that they're working towards, like the lore. There's no need to act in a certain way if you're not feeling like it. Don't get me wrong, the server was still doing great, the story was still gripping and keeping people hooked, but it suddenly felt like the aspect of the server which was most important was suddenly fake. This clearly had an effect on the members of the SMP, especially people like Tommy and Wilbur, who started to stream on it less and less. Suddenly, the whole reason the Dream SMP had differentiated itself from the other servers, the routine, the realness of the server, it was gone, and it couldn't really be revived, no matter what. The final nails in the coffin for me were the prison and Foolish's base. These two huge, incredibly designed and built structures that took hours upon hours of grinding to construct, and although they're amazing feats of architecture in Minecraft, with the prison alone creating a spin-off trend that is wildly popular, I can't help but wonder what happened to the tiny little holes in the sides of mountains that used to be what people called home. Lamanberg, though it seemed huge at the time, was little more than four walls, something anyone could build in an hour or so with enough dedication. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I miss the way the Dream SMP used to be. I could be looking at it through rose tinted glasses, I could be asking for too much from a server that can't afford to listen to just my individual wants, but I miss the old dreams. I miss the early disc saga, which felt like an actual real struggle, with each side actually trying their utter best to get the discs without anything holding them back, without a set storyline to follow. I miss the creation of Lamanberg's name, this incredibly important word that was just created because of Tommy talking a bit about men and women. I miss opening up Twitch every evening and hear the familiar tune of the Able Sisters play, punctuated by loud laughs and the occasional switch to the energetic Shotgun Raids intro. I miss when the Dream SMP felt real. There is a glimmer of hope, however, and that's that the server is going to be reset soon to get a new seed with the new world generation. Although there's already a way for the streamers to explore the new world gen through crying obsidian portals, there's a chance, though slim, that it's a temporary fix to help wrap up storylines and properly end the current plot. With that reset, there's a chance that the streamers can start over, will have another story to create without the expectations that the current one has. They'll be able to make content in the way that excites them, in a way that is real once more. As of about August 3rd, 2020, I had been struggling to find my foothold on YouTube for months before this, unsure of what I enjoyed making. I tried making a Let's Play like everyone else, I tried joining an SMP, I tried making animations of all things. That's the reason behind the name of this channel, by the way, Annie for Animations and Magician. My first Dream SMP video was, and this fact surprised me at the time, the first Dream SMP video that was uploaded to YouTube that wasn't made by one of the members. It's also still by far my most viewed video of all time, despite it being recorded on a barely functional set of earphones that peaked every two seconds, and I think that's because the Dream SMP was the first thing that truly excited me, that really made me want to create and share and talk about it. And this video is a way for me to, in essence, say thank you. Thank you for 100k subs, thank you for this channel, thank you for what you've given me. I've been Annie, and thanks for watching.